Let me apologize for the heater in the background. It'll be going on and off periodically. And this is not going to be the quickest video because there seems to be misunderstanding when you're putting these on here, especially the any of the Junko. Well, they're any Chinese kit. It's great, but they're pretty much all garbage. Uh, but any of the uh, dual kits that are designed for a 420 or a 35, they come with various spacers and whatnot in the package, and uh, they don't always uh, really tell you where they go, and I don't think any of them do. So people put them together all sorts of weird ways and get, get stuff that's not exactly how uh, it should be. And it just uh, ends up bothering people. See there, the heater turned off, so now it's quiet. I don't gotta yell over it. Maybe I should have taken this cover off first, but. I've been riding this, so I've got some uh, belt dust in there. <clears throat> now, I'm going to break it down some here. Now, I'm just using that. Hopefully, I can explain all this without popping the chain off. So, I'm going to grab the brake. That should hold it enough so I can get this off. And I probably won't uh, get that all the way off yet because I want to take the front off first. Just Uh, first, uh, let's see. First thing is throw away your garbage fastener, your factory fastener. If you're running the 420 chain and you got the proper spacers, which you're going to see here in a second, you should have enough to get a grade eight, two and a half inch shouldered bolt, and the grade eight lock washer and the grade eight flat washer in behind it. And then this two pound piece of, piece of junk here. See, part of the reason the jar, Joggernaut is a better design, not for speed or power, but the snout on this rear shiv sticks out and fully supports all this two or three pounds worth of garbage there. But then you want yourself a decent fastener, something like that, that'll hold it all and not allow it to come loose because, you know, you got this here and you see it's not like a great machine fit, so it's just the, the tension of the bolt holding it on there. And the, this is all stamped steel, so it's low quality shit. None of it's straight or anything like that. That's Don't think when you're spending 40, 50 bucks on eBay or Amazon that you're getting high performance, because you're not. <clears throat> Let me put that back up there. That's it right there. So take the belt off, <clears throat> which just goes on there. <clears throat> check that every so often you want that bushing and you want it to be nice don't let dirt get in behind it so if you're running 420 chain you're going to end up with oh, keyway is coming out that's okay I guess you may or may not, this is a may or may not, they give you this book, this spacer for if you're running 420 chain to have enough clearance off the back of this shiv. And you can see I have a few strike marks in it around it because I first wanted to try to see if I could put it together without the spacer because keeping everything closer to the motor is better, especially for your crankshaft life. <clears throat> um, and it worked okay, but it, it with it, you had to keep the chain really tight, otherwise you got chain strike. Um, so I ended up putting that in. But as soon as you do that, you gotta also put the other equipped spacer up front, and you always, always, always have to have this thick flat uh, half inch in there. And if you don't have that, you'll probably need to stack about six 14 gauge 
machine bushings, not washers, machine bushings. Look for machine bushings. They don't cost that much more. And they're what you want on a crankshaft. <clears throat> now, what you don't see and what I made is you'll see a lot of these kits, I'm holding that sprocket in, they'll have a little side play, which might be okay, but it lets this whole assembly move over to where your chain can start striking the backing plate. So in behind there, and you probably can't see it, this shaft is 5 8 until it goes in the bearing and then it becomes like 16 millimeter or maybe 17. And so I took a 5 8 machine bushing, thin as I could get. So it's more, actually I got like a shim. And shim stock would work the best because you don't. It's only, you only need it about fifty to eighty thousandths thickness. Because what you don't want to do is create a situation that when you torque this down, that you pull against the snap ring on the back and pull it into the bearing. You want to just take the slack out. So maybe in your case, you cut up an aluminum can and make some aluminum can washers or whatever. But that's what I've got in behind there to take up that little extra bit of side play. And it also gives me, you know, another 50 thousandths or 80 thousandths clearance of that chain off the backing plate. This engine is generally about far forward as it can get and out this way. And then the sprocket is, you know, you adjust your adjusters on the sprocket to get it lined up with the chain. Uh, what else? I think that's about it. And I'd have to take the chain off here to show you that. Uh, if you just slide the 5 8 washer on it, it's just going to come up against the machine shoulder of this jack shaft where it slides to the, and it's not going to do, you need to hog it out a little bit so it'll go up onto the shoulder there and take up that slack. That's just something I chose to do. And then this goes back to them. So yeah, if I, I know in the kit, <clears throat> it's funny, they come with this funky looking washer to the outside and that's where everyone thinks it belongs. This is the 420 chain spacer. That's just, so if you're using, if you take the 35 sprocket off and you put on the 420 chain because it's wider and everything like that, that's what this is supposed to be for. <clears throat> it's not for out at the end. Although, that's uh, kind of what people think it's for. Now, my, that little shim I talked about making, I made mine a little bit, it's a little bit too thick. And so I do have to be careful when I crank this down on here that I don't uh, get it too tight. And so what I'm doing here, knocking everything down, is checking uh, to make sure it's, I'm not getting any drag, but I'm taking it. So there's no side to side play and there's no drag. So that's what I want. And then I want to put, I'm going to put uh, my back shim on. I don't know if I'd recommend it or not, but you know, all your bronze bushings on everything in the world usually have a little oil in them. I don't know if I'd say put oil on here, but definitely keep it clean or don't let this thing get burned up. It's important. So it saves, it saves the life of your belt. So now I got that on there. And then, you know, everyone knows this, I think. You put the flat side towards the engine, like that. So the dimensions on these things are three quarters across the top and 27 and then a sixteenth to an eighth or whatever around the outside. Uh, those are important measurements to know. And then by Kevlar, I think that's just rubber, but Kevlar always works good. And Kevlar is just the trade name for Aramid. So either way, you get that type of material in your belt, and it'll last a long time. So maybe I should put that in here first. You know, 
as well. Soft precision stamped steel. I laugh. So think about this. The, f the junk uh, retainer they give you is about that much shorter. So you're not in fully engaging your crank threads. And the flywheel's held on with a nut, a cheapo nut, that you torque up to 54 foot-pounds. So, and all of these side cover bolts, they're, they're going into aluminum, they're 17 foot-pounds, right? So you know this bolt could easily be torqued someplace between 17 and 54. So, uh, I'm real big on torque and stuff, but when it comes to this, I just kind of go tight as I can get it without stripping it. I haven't put a torque wrench on these to see what it is, but uh, it's something tight. Tighter than 17, but less than 54. That's what I can tell you. That's all in alignment now. And it won't make noise. It'll run good. <clears throat> Where you might get, as your chain heats up and it comes bumping along here, you may get a little strike on your cover. So depending on sprocket size, I when I went from a 50 tooth to a 60 tooth, I had to take about a finger's width more plastic off here. And I've now got a 72 tooth that's sitting over at the post office box I gotta go get. I theorize I'll probably take another finger's worth off in order to have enough clearance for the angle the chain's going to come in. So, also, on these uh, heat shields back here, you don't have to remove it. I know the factory bolt's got a tall head, but if you go get either a stainless button recess or, uh, in, or the nitride black one, you know, the stainless is 50 cents. It goes in there, and then you've got adequate clearance to keep your... This, and by the way, I mistakenly called this a heat shield. It's not a heat shield, it's a blower housing extension and directs the air around these fins over here. A lot of people think it's a heat shield, that's not what it is. But I've been brainwashed by all those people who keep calling it a heat shield, so sorry about that. It's a blower housing extension. Blower housing extension. Jeez, I can't even talk this morning. More coffee needed. So I hope this video is helpful. And uh, thanks for tolerating my uh, sense of humor.